Hey guys, I had some time on my hands today, so I wanted to talk you through some of my favorite indie perfumes. And I am someone who is really, really into fragrances. If you don't count some of these indie little bottles I have, I do have over a hundred normal, regular, alcohol-based commercial perfumes. And when I refer to indie perfumes, I am not talking about Frederick Marl, I am not talking about by Killian, I am not talking about those really expensive, exclusive niche fragrances which are available at exclusive boutiques and cost you an arm and a leg and a head. I am talking about all these little independent perfume manufacturers who control their own process, who very often uh, produce these by hand in-house. The reason I find indie fragrances really interesting and fun to collect, fun to experience, is they really don't play by the rules of traditional or you know general mass market perfumery. Very often you will find a lot of these scents, accords and notes used by these indie perfumeries to be completely different from the standard issue fare that you will find from say Dior or Chanel. One other reason I like these perfumeries I'll be talking about today is the fact that they use a lot of natural extracts and absolutes in their scents. One other reason I have a huge love for a lot of indie perfumeries is a lot of the noses or the designers, creators of the perfumes are really into natural abstracts and absolutes. There is a certain depth and complexity to a real rose absolute that you will never find in synthetic replacement or alternative that is usually used in uh, generic mass market perfumes to keep the price point low. Natural extracts are extremely expensive in many, many cases. So including a significant portion in a scent is a real luxury in most cases. The thing to remember about natural extracts is they interact with your body chemistry. They will change, they will evolve, they ripen and become richer or they become softer as time goes on. So you will find that a scent that you've just purchased may smell slightly different from how it will be in two years time, four years time. It's always changing. We all know that scents will smell slightly different from person to person because the scent molecules will interact with your natural body chemistry, the acidity level in your skin, the level of moisture and oil, but it's never more true than when you are talking about a scent that contains a lot of natural extracts. To keep this video from becoming way too long, I am not going to go through every single fragrance that I own, obviously. I will probably cover them brand by brand, uh, starting with the ones that I have the smallest collection of and then working my way up to Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, which I have amassed quite a collection of over the years. The first indie brand that I will talk about today is Lush. Now, this is a UK-based bath and body company. They did not start out doing fragrances. They were famous for soaps, they were famous for shower gels, shower jellies, bath bombs and all that. Lush's perfumes were all grouped under their Gorilla fragrance category. And I remember reading somewhere that the owners named it as such because they wanted to wage Gorilla warfare against the mass market boring standard issue fragrances that were all over the place. And once this whole COVID-19 situation is over, I do highly suggest that you walk into one of these stores if there is one near you and have a sniff of some of these scents because they are so unique and they're very, very strong. Lush perfumes pack a huge punch. The very first scent I ever bought from Lush is also the one that I've been using and repurchasing for the longest time, and that is Lust. Now, Lust is a heady, white floral. It is a jasmine bomb. So if you do not love jasmine, you want to stay very, very far away from this one because it is unapologetically juicy, rich, ambery jasmine. Jasmine Sambak is the Indian jasmine. It's really voluptuous and it contains a huge dose of indoles. Now, indoles are molecules that make uh, flowers smell a little bit like decay. Some people like to call it corpses. But Jasmine Grandiflorum is the more cultured, more well-behaved cousin of the voluptuous Jasmine Sambak. This is lighter, it's brighter, it's a little bit sweeter. Uh, some people find it smells like candied 
fruits or you know like grape soda just really sugary and bright and happy smelling even though it's called lust i find this to be more of a happy sweet jasmine than the truly sexy dirty kind performance wise this has a massive throw so do not over spritz or this is going to be one of those scents that enters a room before you and then stays there long after the party is over I do own quite a sizable Lush fragrance collection, including some weirder scents. However, one that I never hesitate to recommend to people who want something fresh and really pleasing and likeable is What Would Love Do? Just from the name itself, you would be able to tell that they were trying to capture or depict the sense of all-encompassing love. Not just romantic love, but love in general. It is really sweet, really almost kind of a nurturing scent. I don't know why, but that's the only description I can find for it. This is based mostly around a very sweet tangerine note. So it's citrus, but it's not quite as sharp as some citrus notes can be. It's a little bit more aromatic and more fragrant than orange, but it has that kind of orangey note to it, which makes the smell like sunshine to me. Every time I spritz it on, I go, <gasps> <sighs> because it's like that first hit of really sweet, freshly squeezed orange juice. That happiness, that sugariness. There's also some lavender in this, but it's not really a strong standalone note. It's really just there to give some depth and some complexity to the tangerine. And there's also a little bit of tonka bean in here, which is just a tiny bit more detectable or stronger than the lavender note, I find. Uh, gives a bit of a powdery, soft, blankety kind of a base to the whole thing so it's not just a sharp citrus there's a little bit of a cushiony soft creaminess to it as well so i don't know if it's just the whole personality and feel of the perfume it smells very happy and girly to me but of course it's really up to you whether you're a guy or a girl you know just buy what makes you happy now the second indie perfumery that I've purchased quite a few times from is called 1692 and this is a play on the year 1692 which was the year of the Salem Witch Trials. So as you would expect, uh, quite a lot of the concepts and themes used by 1692 are pretty gothic in nature. Weirdly though, where I find their scents particularly outstanding uh, are in the ones that smell decidedly modern. And one of my favorites of all time is one called New Radio. Now this is a completely weird scent, but it is so fun. Uh, it's described as an atmospheric gourmand, meaning you know it evokes a certain atmosphere or a scene, and it's also slightly foodie. So the notes are vanilla milkshake accord, maraschino cherry, pink lemonade, grass clippings, and waffle cone. So imagine it's summer, you're sitting outside in the sun, you're eating a vanilla waffle cone with a little cherry on top, and you're surrounded by freshly mown grass. So it's sappy, it's green, it's creamy. You can smell every single one of the elements in there. I don't smell the lemonade in this, but other than this, everything else is in there. It smells so real and so surreal at the same time. It is amazing. So if you ever have the chance, please try this. I think this is outstanding. The other one I really, really love is called Bells For Her. And if I don't remember wrong, uh, they won an award for this one. And the notes for this are sweet basil, dandelion, sour jasmine, green vines, mandarin, ozone, green tea, and crushed mint. So green, white, green, 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 green. And this just smells so delicate and so beautiful, but it smells like straight up expensive niche fragrance. Now this would not smell out of place at a Frederick Mal boutique, but it is inexpensive and it is just beautifully composed. It is green, it is sappy, it is fresh and crisp, and my favorite time to use this is when I'm feeling really, really warm. It's muggish and it's really humid and I feel kind of sticky and irritated, then this is kind of head clearing. It is so fresh and it really calms me down. 1692 scents are available in both spray-on bottles, alcohol-based, or these oil-based roll-ons and dab-on bottles. Now, I like the feel of vintage roll-on, dab-on parfum, so obviously I went for the oils. 